Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Yeah, here's hoping that 2022 will be a, an awesome year compared to <laughs> the past few ones. <laughs> sure hope so. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for joining me. I'm really excited to chat with you all. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm really digging the EP, The Smile and the Scar, which is a cool yeah. name. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have to say... um. Two new stars. I, I really dig that track. The musicality is killer, and I love the guitar riffs and solos and the twists and turns the song takes. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, what was the um, inspiration behind that song? Uh, uh, lyrically or musically? <laughs> uh, I guess both. I guess how did how did that song originate? Why don't you start talking about the music since it's something we've been playing for quite a while. Yeah, and, uh, so we um, uh, we started right that song came to be over two years ago now uh, musically, um, and it was one of those songs like I just you know that the intro riff just kind of I woke up one morning and it just kind of came to be and the whole song musically was actually the basis of the song was written probably in about an hour or so right after I woke up um and uh you know we worked on it collectively for a minute it kind of sat on the back burner and then our other guitarist Ray who's not with us today um finally like wrote his riffs for it uh and like turned it into the foundation of the song um you know Chris our drummer right here you know kind of makes most of the rhythmic choices you know what once uh within the time parameters that I set. <laughs> um, and that actually, uh, Dan changed, uh, Dan, the guy in the T-Club shirt over here, the bassist, he, <laughs> uh, he actually had a bunch of different bass lines throughout uh, the course of, you know, the year or a few months leading up to the pandemic. And then actually, right as we were getting set to record it, um, he made some new choices that really helped kind of push that super creepy ominous feel that's like in the verses and stuff but uh ben the guy over uh there he's our singer and um he uh he's the newest member of the band and he came in like really turned the song into something completely different and lyrically i'll let him speak about that so like the writing process for me having joined the band late is like the the band is was sitting on so much material already when I joined so and they uh they have some pretty decent rehearsal recordings so the way that we were starting to work was like they would send me recordings of their rehearsals and then I would like play around with some ideas uh and then send them back to the band and see like is this sort of in the direction that we want to go um or like what kind of tweaks or ideas do you want to add to that uh, and with Two New Stars, um, it's a song like, uh, I had a, a, a buddy in college and university who um, lost his sister and her sister's friend. Um, and they, I don't know, they were, they were murdered, frankly. And, okay. um, uh, and we were all in school, like, just, I don't know, just trying to process that. And like, the song for me is a little bit about like, my buddy had sort of every reason to like, uh, I don't know, to have, to have a really sort of messed up adulthood, to, to go through that kind of trauma. Um, and yet somehow he, somehow he made it. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he has like, he, he, I don't know, he managed to, to, to forge a, a, a regular and a prosperous life despite this like, this huge tragedy in his life. Um, and when I listened to the song, you know, as Tony pointed out, like there's riffs in the verses that sound to me completely sinister. And yet the outro of the song sounds to me really optimistic. Um, so I was interested in like trying to create something lyrically that told both of those stories in a really honest way. Um, uh, so I, I remember sending the idea back uh, and Tony being like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm digging it. Like, what's the song about? And then when I, I told, I sat down and I told the band what it was about, and they're all like, all right. So like this song means something entirely different now. 
Um, but I don't know. I think I think we're all really proud of that one. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's so, nice to have it mean something tangible now, yeah. other than vague emotions that were conjured just from the the vibe of the music. Like mm -hmm. it, I find it to be very complimentary, and like it's it is like even though I'm like you know I wrote the basis of the song, like hearing hearing the words every time you sing them when we play a show or rehearse or even just like working on the record, like it's like, it's so gut-wrenching and cathartic at the same time. It's it's almost eerie how well conceptually the song, uh, the lyrics match what we had done uh, prior with the music and how it plays out like a storyline and how all the parts, um, well, like Tony said, and like Ben said, complement uh, the lyrics and the story that is behind it. So um, I, you know, I couldn't think of a better way to round out the song than what Ben did lyrically. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So basically, I, what I read is the whole concept of the album deals with loss in some manner. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's a pretty yeah, good <laughs> And, and I'm a and happy feel good record. Yeah. <laughs> Amadeus, Amadeus doesn't have quite the happy ending that uh, Tunu manages to to find. But um, to me, what's significant about Amadeus is that it's the first song I ever heard he was a god play. Uh, so I just heard it completely without words. But like that is the song that like I just had like goosebumps on my arm. Like I heard like the the odd time signatures and the changes. Um, and I was just like, this band smokes. Oh my God, this is really, really good stuff. Um, so when I was like, when I was in talks with them about auditioning for the band, for me, it was really important that like, that Amadeus was the first thing that I wanted to work on. I just thought like it was really complicated. And to me, that song um, tells a lot about what the the band does and um and what they're about so I was really interested in working on that one so um yeah so I, I put this song together about this old musician uh that I knew who um uh who sadly is no longer with us uh had all the talent in the world and um just fell in with the wrong crowd and the wrong kind of substances and um and uh, yeah, he just, he, he just didn't make it. Um, so for me, like that song is like, that guy ha had had everything to offer um, and made a lot of people happy when he played music. Um, and sadly, you know, the, the world is deprived of that now. So I tried to write this song about, I don't know, how, how alone he must have felt to be able to do what he did to himself. And, um, uh, and I just wanted to, I don't know, just wanted to tell a story about like that is, that's a that's a real shame for for all of us. Absolutely. And so, what are your hopes for um twenty twenty two as a band? Um, are you guys just planning to keep writing, or hopefully go on the road, depending on COVID, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right now, you know, we're looking to push the EP and play as much as possible. <clears throat> we have a core of music that you know, we would like to record, whether it be broken up into a couple more EPs or a full length. Um. Yeah, no, I mean, with the uncertainty of how things are going, you know, at least we have stuff we can work on, you know, we could, God forbid, we, you know, we lose live music again for a while, at least, you know, the five of us are doing the right things personally, so we can keep getting together, uh, working on this, you know, catalog that we have. We do hope to get some new music into our portfolio this year. Um, we're, we're reasonably prolific writers in this band. Um, but, you know, with the, the first shutdown, you know, with quarantine and everything, you know, it put a huge, um, put a huge break on the band for a while. So now it's nice that we've been getting this momentum going over the past, uh, really just the past eight months or so now, like since we've been able to get in rooms together and play and um, yeah, we, we made some investments this year into our own like studio gear and everything. So we are able to definitely take on bigger recording processes and kind of work at our own pace, our own leisure. Uh, you know, we, we're all guys with careers too, you know, unfortunately music is in our day job for, uh, 
for the most part. But um, yeah, definitely get out and play whatever shows we can, you know, mostly in the more local, like Northeast area to New York City kind of stuff. Uh, we're based in Southern New England, but um, yeah, just uh, keep keep writing, rocking, and making music that is weird, but doesn't seem so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Weird That's is good. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually in Boston, so not too far. Have you guys um, played in Boston, you know, a bit since you're not that far away? Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll get some stuff. I, I would imagine maybe... You probably won't see us up there before like mid year, but hopefully, so, yeah, uh, springtime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, nice, cool. And I'm a couple of days late, but what was your favorite release in 2021? Favorite album release? Everybody want to go one by one? Oh, boy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Left to right or right to left? Where we want to go? I have a def I have a definitive answer. Yeah, Tony can respond. To For that. me, my and number that's... one record of the year was uh, "Hushed and Grim" by Mastodon. It just crushed me front to back. Absolutely perfect record, and followed by Colors Two uh, between the variants. Well, she didn't ask for two. I'm just <laughs> gonna, oh, it's okay. That, that <laughs> right, I have close to another one. Such a close second. The runner up. <laughs> um, I don't know what my top album was, but one album that just came out this year that I've been listening to a lot is Strength by Unto Others. Oh, nice. I don't even know that. Oh man. Well, I mean, <laughs> Colors Two is is hands down. Hands down, front to back. Haven't stopped listening to it since it came out. So between the buried and me. Good Lord. Um, <clears throat> um, I don't know. I'm the the all the years kind of mixed together. Trying to think like what point. came out in twenty twenty one. I see. I, I wrote out a list of my top yeah, eleven. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, just as a, I don't know. In the interest of like something, uh, something weirder. Maybe the the newest, uh, the newest No Effects record. I listened to a lot this year. Yeah, right on. I thought you were going to say Halloween, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, good choices. Jen, what's your favorite uh, record of the year? Oh gosh, um, you know, actually, I put together a list. Um, have you guys heard of Blacktop Mojo? Yeah. I have not. I haven't. But they're from uh, Texas. They're kind of like a, they're kind of like a mixture of heavy rock, but they also have some like southern bluesy songs too. But they put on a good live show. I saw them uh, just a few. Well, actually, yeah, like you said, the time kind of blends together. It seems like it was just a few <laughs> weeks ago, but it was like maybe a month or two ago. <laughs> Very cool. That was a that was a good album. Nice. But yeah, it's hard to choose just one because there's so many releases this past year. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was definitely a great year for for new music. I mean, it's nice to get to see a few shows and play a few shows, but man, there was no shortage of great albums that came out this year. Yeah, I think it's, you know, because of COVID, people had to, like you said, stay prolific with songwriting and keep busy with live music on hold. Yep. Yeah, uh, it was yeah. kind of an opportunity that that you never really see to the extent that we did, where you have musicians, especially at the beginning of COVID, who are really locked in their in their apartments or houses, and are not forced, but but they have the opportunity really to do nothing but just write and uh, and and perform their music, um, you know, under under that that sort of um, scenario. So. In some in some ways, we were we were lucky for all of that, and then to have it all come out—that's <laughs> that's that's a silver lining. Yes, <laughs> you got to look at the bright spots for COVID, and that was one of them. Sure. And so, you guys have played in other bands. Um, what was the main motivation for you guys to get together to create this band? Oh, sure. um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Tony, Dan, and I actually grew up playing music together. Um, we started our first band together when we were 10. Um, we played together for over a decade. Um, I took some time off. I play in a couple other bands. Um, and then I moved back to the area in 2019. And we just started getting together and just kind of jamming to, you know, 
for something to do. And Tony had started to write some music for a project, not specifically this. And um, yeah, just kind of felt good. And we felt that chemistry that we used to have playing um, and just kind of pushed forward with it. Oh, nice. So you guys, since you guys kind of grew up, I guess you guys know each other pretty well musically and you know what works, what doesn't work. And yeah, very much so. Yeah. And, you know, even with, you know, just kind of meeting Ben and him coming into the fold, um, you know, we, we hit it off with him right away and felt that chemistry as well. So it's it's been a good union of people coming together and playing. Absolutely. Yeah, cool too, because even though like uh, four out of the five of us grew up together, like we all do have very different musical influences and like to say we have different musical backgrounds is a little weird because our background is literally shared for uh, four fifths of us, but um, we definitely like all different aspects. Like I, I'm a complete and utter like prog nerd and like nobody on the band besides me really is, even though like, you know, I'm, I write most of the music. Um, so like everybody else's influence kind of tones down the nonsense that I would do <laughs> otherwise, which is really, I think, super helpful. And, you know, we are prog diluters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's a, like, even though we came from the same place, like we, uh, we all have a myriad of different, different influences and, I think it kind of shows in the music somewhat, maybe. I don't know. I, don't know. I think so. Well, I think you know a lot. Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely can hear it in the EP. I can hear, like, elements of different yeah. styles of rock music. Yeah, 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 we definitely pull from a lot of different places. Yeah. Which no, I, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm kind of all over the map when it comes to rock music, too, so I kind of appreciate when bands can find a unique sound and kind of blend it all together and make it work, so. Yeah, familiar enough, but unique. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. And also to uh, you know, close out the conversation, I, I love hearing from people what their favorite concert memory is, Ooh. which is kind of hard because if you attend a lot of concerts, it's, it's hard to choose just one, but if one comes to mind. Man, yeah, wow, well, huh. I'm not going to start because uh, I want to think about it a little bit more. But everybody, uh, for me, uh, one of my favorite concert memories goes back quite a while. It goes back to 1996, actually. Um, was seeing uh, the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, the first time I ever got to see the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, got to see them at Madison Square Garden on the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness tour. This was actually the infinite infamous show where um jonathan melvoin od'd and passed away and oh, jimmy wow. od'd so uh it was rescheduled for a couple months later and my father brought me this was for my fifth grade graduation i got to go to the show um and even though it wasn't the original lineup of the band i've never seen a band in all my years play so hard and so magically they played for, I believe, three and a half hours that night. They did wow. three encores, including Whole Lot of Love, which is just so weird to see the Pumpkins do that. <laughs> but that's forever my number one. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Um, that's my number one. Too. Even though I wasn't <laughs> you there. You had that one. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it. <laughs> they played the airplane fly side. Yeah, when so you hear that. Smashing Pumpkins, you like instantly think of the 90s. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we have a lot of 90s influence in what we do. Like, no, I, I grew up in the 90s, so I'm kind of nostalgic for that time period. <laughs> well, us too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is crazy, because um, I don't know if it's the same where you guys are, but in Boston, when I walk around the college areas, I see so many students dressed like they're from the 90s, so oh, I, don't yeah. think, okay. I guess yeah, it's coming yeah. back. <laughs> Hopefully musically, too. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, who, who wants next? I could, I could take it unless somebody's yeah, chomping ahead. at yeah, the bit. Ahead, so I, got a weird, I got a weird one, actually, now that I think about it. Um, something that stood out 
So the first OzFest I went to, yeah. I'm not going to say mm. Black Sabbath, even though that was incredible. 1999. 1999 OzFest. Um, early, the, one of the first acts, we, we show up and it's what, about 10 a.m.? Yeah. 10.30 in the morning. And I look on stage and there's a bunch of dudes in fucking jumpsuits <laughs> and these crazy masks. And there's, you know, people are scattered about in the crowd. It's definitely not full because it's early. And I'm like, who are these guys? What is this sort of thing? And it was the first time I saw Slipknot. And I never even heard of Slipknot. I know they were <laughs> brand new. And it was one of those moments where I was like, wow, these guys are going to be fucking huge. And I'm basing this on a uh, early morning performance uh, in, where was it, Hartford? Hartford, yeah. And just like listening to them, I was like, I have not heard anything like that and you know they're not not a top five band of mine but i just remember that feeling of i can anticipate even though i was young i can anticipate what this is going to turn out to be here we are 22 years later yeah. they're one of the biggest heavy and, bands in the world and it was yeah it was just like such a mind fuck for me to to like see that and to have that realization of these guys got something and i can uh, i can look into the future and see what this is going to be for them and you know, for once I was right. Hand in your crystal ball. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's weird to think, you know, these huge mega bands were once just a local band that people saw and might have yeah. just shrugged yeah. off. But then next thing you know, they're like the hugest band. <laughs> it's yeah. a strange kind of experience to see bands. I'm sure we all have that, you know, look back on that band that you saw and kind of have that feeling like, yeah, this is going to be something. Nice. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll say um, uh, I saw um, I saw Faith No More at uh, at Webster Hall when they did their reunion tour uh, in 2015. And like they've been my favorite band for decades, and I never saw them actually live when they were uh, you know in the the first incarnation. Uh, so like one of my best friends and I, we went to Webster Hall to see them, and they like. I remember the lights went down and they opened with Motherfucker, which is a song off their like their comeback album. Um, and it's, so, you know, it's sort of like a slow song and like a kind of a new song, but people were so excited to see them. And then they went into Land of Sunshine right after that. And like the lights changed. I just remember like, it was like, I'm like, this must be what people who go to church feel. <laughs> like I just like spiritually felt just like, oh, oh it's happening it's like it's like I'm, uh it's like speak to me speak to me they played Landis, but like and, you know, they played for two hours the best thing was is that show ended and my buddy who came he was like oh by the way and he reaches into his pocket and he's like they play tomorrow night and we have tickets for that <laughs> so saw them twice in a row and the second night they encored they played we care a lot and Roselle from the roots came out and did that yes that so i was like oh wow. this is this is really special. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and for me, I guess I would have to say first time I saw Nine Inch Nails on the oh, Fragile wow. Tour. Oh, um, I was there with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. At that period, it was just like such orchestrated chaos on stage. It and, really um, you know, the, the production on that tour was just amazing. And you could just feel like a tangible energy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You guys all had like really cool concerts. <laughs> Getting to see all these legendary bands. Yeah, I'd say so. That's yeah, awesome. Lucky. Yeah. And we're old enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, is uh, anything else people should be on the lookout for uh, in the next coming weeks or so? Tommy? Uh, over the next few weeks, we got a couple shows coming up. Um, we're playing uh, this coming Friday uh, at a bar in Putnam, Connecticut with um, Thy Will Be Done and Disciples of Verity, um, which uh, is a show we're all looking forward to as big uh, fans of all the bands that make up Disciples of Verity. Um, God forbid in living color, like we're really super stoked to play with them. <laughs> Uh, then we got uh, another um, show coming up the week after at the Cellar on Treadwell uh, in Hamden, Connecticut. Um, that's Friday the 14th. Uh, we're playing with a bunch of like awesome heavy kind of 
local progressive minded band, uh, Turkey Vulture and Shagahad. Uh, they're both awesome, awesome bands that I'm really stoked to play with. That's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> Shagahad? Shagahad. Check out their new record. Uh, <laughs> honorable mention to the new Shagahad record uh, came out, I believe, early December. It is, it is a Friggin' masterpiece. It's so really I, interesting. Face meltery. It, it is just so weird and beautiful, and I can't stop listening to it. Um, it's going to be one of those great lineups where, like, all the bands that night sound completely different from yeah. one another, and I think it's really cool. That There's we're a through gonna, line, but that, like, so different. We're all going to come together and like share that yeah. and, and be like, we're, we're all for all of this. Yeah. yeah oh, nice. So. Um, yeah, you know, we, we just want to be playing as much as possible. Um, we're, we just released the, the lyric video for Amadeus, but uh, we're in talks about uh, possibly uh, an actual music video. Um, so yeah, those are all the next things on the horizon. Oh, very exciting. Uh, more li uh, more uh, recordings will come later this year, whether it's another EP or a uh, full length. To be determined, but... I would say we'll be working on recording again, probably by summer, maybe get something out. Um, maybe something for fall, early winter, we'll see. Hopefully not uh, another late December release. <laughs> it happens, but it's going to yeah. be a fun ride, so we're looking forward to it. Yeah, Yeah. no, it looks like it's going to be an exciting year for you guys. Thanks, yeah, we hope so. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for chatting and, um, you know, it's been a blast talking and hopefully catch you maybe in Boston or maybe I'll come down to Connecticut and catch one of your shows. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, take care. <laughs>